the mains action up today. But that works out because I'm going to be talking about the Lion City, Singapore. Sometimes on those crazy hair days, it helps to have a really big hat. But I think Singapore's a lion city. When I was there, I just remember seeing a lot of lions and they have a really big lion statue, so I'm just gonna call it the lion city. But you're here for some travel tips or some travel advice on the city of Singapore itself. So typically, when I would do my travel advice videos, I would go through my entire trip story, but that isn't really helpful to you guys because you don't get to hear all the tips you want and them um, organized in the way where it's helpful and convenient for you. So that's how I'm gonna do this video today. So the first thing you wanna do is to get to the city of Singapore itself. So most likely you'll have to fly in. And just as a general disclaimer, do not bring drugs into Singapore or any country in this area. Most of them have what they call capital punishment. And that's a death sentence in English. So if it's illegal in your country or was illegal and recently became legal, don't bring it to Singapore. Of course, if you need medications, those are okay. Those are the clarified drugs you can bring. But if it's something that you might have had to hide from the police at one time, don't bring it. Don't bring it in a cookie form. Don't bring it in a herb form. Don't bring it in a grinded form. Just don't bring it. Besides that, the Singapore airport is actually super awesome. Out of all the airports I've ever been to, if you had to get stranded in one, this would be the one to get stranded in because it's a literally like a hotel inside an airport with how nice it is. But getting around the city of Singapore itself, there's a bus system. They do have a grab car. I think they might have Uber by now, but the train system is the perfect way to get around as a tourist. And that's because they have special cards, which you do have to return at some point, but you can pick X amount of days that you're there and basically get unlimited train rides. And these trains are super fast, super efficient, and super clean. It makes getting around the city of Singapore super easy. But if you're gonna walk around, or if the places you're going to are within a walking distance of each other, Singapore can get very hot during the day because it's still super close to the equator. So the nice thing is with how rich of a city Singapore is, it feels like there's giant just malls every two blocks from each other. So if you need to get out of the sun, get a refreshment or get some cool air, just hop in a hotel, find a directory and walk through it to just get to the closest exit to your next destination. And that's probably the most efficient way of walking around the city of Singapore. So one thing you may notice about Singapore is that it's a very clean and that's because they have very strict rules and laws about graffiti and vandalizing and littering. So bottom line is don't do any of the three unless you really want a rough time with the police and the police can be very intimidating. Now they might not be physically big, but the way they walk, the way they dress and the way they carry themselves has a lot of power to it. The last thing you want is to get in a lot of trouble in a foreign country where they have the death penalty as something you can get for just having marijuana on you. So don't do anything that's suspicious. When it comes to food, what they like to tell you or the thing that I got recommended was a Singapore fried chicken and it's delicious. And if you can pair that with some chicken fried rice, it makes for a fantastic meal for a simple picky eater such as myself. Well, if you want to go super close to home, the Golden Arches is always there to save you, better known as McDonald's, where if you don't know what you want for breakfast, you can still go down and get an egg sandwich and a cup of coffee and have that balanced diet that you need to start your day perfectly. So some basic things that you should bring to Singapore with you is sunscreen because it's hot and sunny, you don't need a lot of bug spray because the city there's not many places for bugs, but you could use a hat just to protect yourself from the sun and then some sunglasses just because of glare and sunny days, you know, sun protection is always welcome. And then make sure you have a water bottle or two so you don't get dehydrated just in case you can't find a place to get water. But in Singapore, there are stores and restaurants everywhere. You should be fine in that regard.
So I did spend one night at the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. It's a really awesome hotel. The pool's awesome, the area's great, the mall by it's super awesome, it's big, it's huge, it's got a ton of stores. It has its own canal system with gondolas inside it, which were pretty cool. But the room itself wasn't special, but the things that is why the hotel is so expensive is what's around it, not the exact room itself. Unless you want to spend high and get a room with an awesome view or extra amenities inside it. When it comes to hostels in Singapore, the one I picked was actually pretty cool. It was a cubby style hostel, so instead of like your traditional bunk beds that you might be sleeping in, it was like a long wall of cubbies and ladders up each wall. It was pretty cool because each person basically had their own box that fit basically a twin mattress in it. Then I had a little cubby with charging ports, so basically you could have your own little isolated private space in a public hostel. So you're gonna find some cool places to stay regardless of what your budget is. I know one of the things about hostels that can make people nervous sometimes is the fact that they may have to leave a lot of their personal stuff behind in a public space when they want to go out for the day. So when you go to hostels, you want to keep all of your personal things and things you can't risk losing on you during the day. You can leave your bag of clothes. No one's really going to go through it because no one's probably going to be your size or wear the things that you want to wear. But just in case, don't bring anything super expensive with you if you're going to end up having to leave your stuff at a hostel all day. Just bring the bare minimum. In a worst case, you just replace a missing t-shirt or pair of pants at the Walmart or convenience store for like five bucks. Don't worry about bringing expensive clothing if you're going to be backpacking all day long. All right, now for the list of things that you should go check out in Singapore. I highly recommend if you're not staying there, at least going to go visit the infinity pool at the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. It's not your regular infinity pool that just goes out into some ocean. It's up high in the sky, basically at the top of a skyscraper. So the infinity pool looks out into the Singapore skyline and it's just a very beautiful sight. A lot of big influencers and Instagrammers like to go here and take your cliche pool photo as I did because why not, of course I'm going to do while I'm there. But behind the hotel are three other awesome places you could spend an afternoon and a night at. You have the Flower Dome, the Cloud Forest, and the Gardens by the Bay. Now the Flower Dome is exactly what it sounds like. Imagine a football field-ish, maybe more on the size of basketball or hockey stadium giant dome with just all the flowers you've ever seen or imagined in your life are all inside this place. So you can get a bunch of cool photos, take some awesome pictures, but you just have to be aware of how many tourists there are in this area that you're gonna have to get creative with how you take photos of yourself in here just to try to get a photo without anyone in it. Now the other dome or the cloud forest as it's called, I think is the better place to go take photos if you had to choose one or the other. And that's because when you walk in, you can get this awesome photo of this giant man-made waterfall that just goes straight up. And then as you circle around the waterfall, climbing it to see all the different parts of the dome, there's cool little areas to go and take photos of with the vegetation too. So if you had to choose one, I would choose the cloud forest between the two because it just makes for better photos. And I think just a giant waterfall is cooler than just a bunch of flowers in a dome, to be honest. Now the third thing is mainly just perfect to go see at night because the garden by the bay are these giant metal man-made trees that are a few stories tall and during the night they're just connected with the lights so at certain times during the night i think it's every hour on the hour starting at six they light up to different songs for whatever they're going to play that night so it's a very cool light show and then if you want to be extra you can buy a ticket to walk around the skywalk that wraps around these trees so you can get an even closer view of these trees lighting up during the night. I highly recommend going to check this out because the amount of engineering and creativity that has gone into this structure is just delightful to see in person. Another cool attraction to go check out is the Sea Aquarium. Or as I should say, you should go see the Sea Aquarium because it's got a lot of things in the sea in it. Besides that repetition, it stands for the Southeast Asia Aquarium and it's considered one of the largest aquariums in the world. Now there's a lot of aquariums I like to keep that title, but this one I think is the largest aquarium due to the amount of water that's inside it. So when you walk in, you will be prepared to be met with just all the 
fish in the sea. Sea. All the fish in the sea aquarium. But when you walk in, I love the entrance. It's got this old school sunken ship kind of vibe to it. And the first attraction is a shark tank you have to walk through. And the entire aquarium is just filled with sea life from all over the world. In fact, it was the first place I saw a blue lobster, which is funny because it's home to New England, which is where I live and I've never heard of it or seen it and I had to go all the way to Singapore to see a New England blue lobster. But besides that, they've got stingrays, sharks, jellyfish, starfish, just anything that lives underneath the water is in this aquarium. Highly recommend going to check it out. Before you do actually go to the sea aquarium, you do want to keep in mind that little kids love aquariums, so you do have to have the patience to deal with large crowds of little kids poking their ways in front of you, screaming, yelling, shouting, but if you can tolerate that, you will get some awesome photos at this aquarium. So if you want to get away from the big tourist sections of the city, go check out some of the sub blocks of the city. You can take a train to Little India, subway train, so it's not like you're going to a new city, it's just like a few blocks away. But Little India is filled with a lot of Indian stores, food places, and markets, which make for some awesome photos to go take just of the people bartering, the food, just the whole interactive environment is a cool area to take photos. Then if you want a nice park feeling to get away from the city, Fort Canning is this large park in Singapore. They use basically an old military base. So it's got some cool stone structures, some awesome stairways that I wish I spent more time trying to find and photograph, but it's a cool escape from the city. Just try to make sure you have water and find some shade in case you get thirsty or too hot walking around in the sun all day. Now there are some other attractions that would have been cool to go see that I didn't get a chance to go do. Now by the sea aquarium is Singapore's Universal Park, but it's pretty similar to the Universal that we have down in Florida in the US which I've been to so I don't want to spend my day going to an amusement park or something similar to it that I've already been to when I'm trying to really experience traveling. Singapore Zoo has this amazing night safari with a bunch of cool lights apparently. I didn't have enough time to go see that. If I had an extra day, I would have tried to cram it into my schedule, but if I was gonna go back to Singapore, it's definitely something on my list that I have to go do. So for a price breakdown of my trip, I basically spent about three days there, probably averaging around 100 to 130 US dollars a day, depending on what I was doing, what I was eating, and where was I staying. To give you an idea of the currency exchange, basically one US dollar is 1.33 Singapore dollars. So the US dollar has a bit of power, but nothing too extraordinary. It's very similar to its strength in Canada or Australia. Our dollar is worth a little bit more, but not that much more. For the places I stayed at, the hostels, I probably spent about 96 Singapore dollars for two nights, and then about $400 because I splurged and stayed one night at the Marina Bay Sands Hotel just because I wanted that experience while I was in Singapore to stay at the most famous hotel. Don't let that impact how your vacationing is. If you don't want to spend three to $400 a night for a fancier hotel, the hostels that you can find in the city are still very nice. When it comes to food, I mostly ate a lot of McDonald's or just fast food on the go, just food I was familiar with. I did spend a few dollars extra and tried the Singapore fried chicken, very delicious. So in total, I spent about 77 to 80 bucks on food. Then when it comes to transportation with grab car, a few bus fees and the train, I spent about $40 getting around for three days, so with how far I was able to go back and forth, that really wasn't bad. It was very affordable for what I wanted to see and go do. Then when it came to entrance fees to the Flower Dome and Cloud Forest and then the Sea Aquarium, I spent about $72, which is a little bit on the heftier side for these big things, but Singapore is a very wealthy city, so you do have to expect some entrance fees to be on the more expensive side. but. All of them are definitely worth it, so I highly recommend going to check them all out. So one of my favorite photos I actually took was not at any of the big main attractions or attractions themselves. I mean, I did get some cool photos of all the places I went to, but my favorite memory is at the Marina Sands Bay Hotel, and it was of the pool. So no, it wasn't the, what you might be thinking, it wasn't a, skyline shot of the pool at sunset. It wasn't a big awesome shot of the pool that I got. 
But my one of my favorite shots was of someone in the pool. So to backtrack, the night I stayed at the hotel, I was there for sunset, just hoping something cool would happen at this infinity pool. Now unfortunately the clouds were too thick to get this awesome overwhelming sunset with the skyline. So I was sitting there, a little disappointed. And then I noticed this beautiful woman walk into the pool. I see this little man behind her with a cell phone trying to help get a photo of her getting the cliche shot that we all like to get at the pool. And I was just thinking, I could get a better photo with my professional camera that I have in my hand. So I waddle into the pool with my camera, ask permission to take her photo. I snap a few and as I'm taking the photos, the sun slowly starts to burst out a little bit more right behind her. So I got this perfect shot of this model with the sun coming out and I was just like, this is an awesome photo. So we exchange information. I go back to my room, look at the photos, look her up, and I was like, oh my god, this is an Instagram model. She has over 700,000 Instagram followers. If she posts one of my photos, this could be a big break. So I edit the photos, send some to her, and she posts a few, and I'm just watching her photos rack up likes. I'm just like, this is it. I'm finally going to get a nice big chunk of followers from this, and I got one follower. And I think the reality is, is that most of our followers are just dudes and they're just gonna like our photos, they're not gonna follow the photographer that took them, so it was a little bit of a letdown, but I think it's just a funny story to tell about this moment, this experience that I met with someone and just a class of people that would never really interact. Like if I just walked into a pool in Boston, there's no way I'm finding someone with 700,000 followers in it. It was just like one of those once in a lifetime chances to just meet someone who's on a different level of, I guess, social media than you are. So I do promise at some point when I make travel advice videos or tips on places to go, there will be video footage of these places eventually. Just all the places I've been talking about recently was from my trip a few years ago where I was only taking photos, not video. So I only have my still photos to talk about. So one day these videos will be more engaging, but I appreciate it the most that watch them now and I hope that all of the advice I talk about helps you planning your trip. But as always, let's recap.